Hello everyone, my name is Confidence and it's great to have you here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the multi-select widget and I'm going to show you some options and ways in which you can configure it. So first to get started, I am going to head over to the widget section and let's bring in a new multi-select widget into the canvas. And right here, we have the multi-select widget showing up. Uh, the first configuration we have here is the options array. And this is an array of objects that is used to build the options shown up in the multi select widget. So we can add a new entry right here, and that would show up as an option that can be selected in the widget itself. So moving on, we have the default value, and this is an array of options that are selected by default. So since this is an array, we can go to add a new entry like red, and you can see that we have red selected by default. We can also specify a placeholder text for the widget. And this is the text that will be shown up when no selection is made. So um, clearing out all the selections we have here, you can see that we have the placeholder we specified over here showing up on the widget. And this would guide the user on making a selection using this widget. We also have the required state. And this is designed to be used with the form widget. So turning this on would disable form submission until the user actually goes into select something from the multi-select widget we have right here. So I'm going to turn this off. Similarly, we have the visible property, which controls the visibility of the widget. And we have the disabled um, property, which makes the widget disabled or not. And for any of these properties, we can go into JavaScript mode to write some logic to turn them on or off based on the conditions from the logic we specified. We also have the server side filtering. Turning this on gives us access to the text the user types in right here in the widget to filter it. So we can capture that text and send it up to an API that we already have configured using the on filter updates action. And then based on the response from that API, we can go back to build new options for the select widget. So this um, helps us to build custom filters using the multi-select widget. Moving on to the actions, we have the on option change. And this action is fired whenever the user goes in to select a new item from the multi-select widget. Uh, and for the options, we can go in to execute any of these actions we have here, which are predefined. Or we can go into the JavaScript mode to write some custom um, action we want to be executed whenever this is triggered. And the same also goes for the on filter update. So this is specifically designed to be used for the server side filtering. And here we have the option to go run a DB query or run an API call with the text that has been entered in by the user from the multi-select widget. All right, so this has been the multi-select widget. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.